Good morning. This is Nuclear Plant Components. In this lecture, we will start talking about lubrication. <clears throat> Specifically, how lubrica lubrication interacts with different surfaces. We will discuss the variety of defects that occur in plant equipment. Due to wear and corrosion, <clears throat> we'll describe the different lubricants used in. commercial industry and define tribology. <laughs> so tribology, tribology, <coughs> excuse me, is the study that deals with <coughs> the design, friction, wear, and lubrication of interacting surfaces. So the key to understanding tribology is understanding how lubricants can reduce friction, induced wear to acceptable levels. So, how lubrication works? Lubrication reduces friction between moving parts by substituting fluid friction for solid friction. <laughs> Lubrication reduces the amount of energy required to perform mechanical actions. <laughs> uh. 
<clears throat> so let's talk about friction. The friction that exists between a body at rest and the surface which it rests is called keyword being static static friction friction that exists between moving bodies is called kinetic friction. Keyword being kinetic. So kinetic, if it's moving, and static, if it's re at rest, if the body's at rest. So there are three types of kinetic friction. You have sliding, rolling friction, and fluid friction. Sliding friction <clears throat> exists when the surface of one solid body is moved across the surface of another solid body. Rolling friction exists when a curved body a cylinder, for example, rolls upon a flat or curved surface. <coughs> Fluid friction is the resistance to motion exhibited by a fluid. <laughs> Cohesion is the molecular attraction between particles that tend to hold a substance or a body together. Cohesion 
is the property that holds the lubricant and enables it to resist breakdown under pressure. The adhesion is the molecular attraction between particles that tends to cause unlike surfaces to stick together. Adhesion is the property of a lubricant that causes it to stick to the parts being lubricated. Viscosity. Viscosity is a measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. Fluid with a high viscosity. <clears throat> is thick, heavy bodied, and slow flowing. It has a high resistance to motion. Low viscosity or fluid has less internal friction and less resistance to flow. So low viscosity fluid flows more easily and develops a thinner
film thickness. The viscosity changes as a function of temperature. And pressure. <coughs> Excuse me. For example, when oil is heated, the viscosity decreases and the oil flows faster. As oil is cooled, the viscosity increases and the oil flows more slowly. <clears throat> the viscosity index. is a measure of how much viscosity increases when an oil is cooled from 210 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So given that viscosity is a function of temperature, then the operating temperature is important to know when selecting lubricating oils. If the temperature is too high, the viscosity <coughs> of the oil may be <coughs> too low to provide the required lubrication. Likewise, if the temperature is too low, viscosity of the oil may prevent the oil from flowing between the two surfaces.
So, modes of full film lubrication. In all modes, surfaces in contact. are separated by a lubricating medium hydrodynamic lubrication occurs In a system due to the shape and relative motion of the surfaces in contact. Hydrostatic lubrication is the result of a lubricant being supplied at a pressure that is high enough separate the surfaces. And boundary lubrication a chemically bonded lubricant which may or may not separate the surfaces covers each surface and viscosity of the lubricant is not a factor for determining where and thin film lubrication the lubricant is not bonded to the surface Therefore, the lubricant will not separate the surfaces. Types of lubricants. Lubricants can be classified as 
liquid. semi-solid or solid. There are two major classifications of liquid lubricants. <clears throat> you have mineral oils versus synthetic oils. Semi-solids are classified as greases. Mineral oils are produced from hydrocarbon crude oil and are the largest class of lubricants. Synthetic oils are classified according to their base. Each type of oil contain additives that inhibit oxidation, reduce corrosion, improve film strength and disperse detergents. Fixed oils are oils from animals or vegetables. <laughs> Mineral oils are less expensive <coughs> than synthetic oils. They are more readily available and have very long life.
synthetic oils are seldom used to lubricate gears due to their high cost and limited availability. They are typically used in an environment having extremely high or low temperatures and near very high speeds or high wear rates are encountered. Solid lubricants are any solid material placed between two moving surfaces to reduce friction and wear to common solid lubricants a graphite and molybdenum that's all fire Solid lubricants <clears throat> are used for extreme pressure, temperature, or operating conditions. Vent using mineral oils and greases. Greases are used for lubrication to prevent friction and wear protect against corrosion
provide a, provide a seal from dirt. And water. Provide lubrication. It does not leak. Or drip off the surface. which it is applied. Fire resistant fluids. <coughs> In applications where accidental rupture. of an oil line may cause fluid to splash on a very hot surface a degree fire a fire resistance well above that of petroleum oil as desired There are four classes of fluids generally used in hydraulic systems. That operate in such an environment. There are phosphate esters. Water glyco fluids. Invert emotions and conventional emotions. <coughs> Phosphate esters. Offer advantages of a good lubricant that requires 
little attention and service. However, they are expensive. Water glycol fluids contain 40 to 50% water in a uniform solution with glycol and polyglycol. to achieve acceptable fire resistance. Ever emotions consist forty percent, fifty percent of water, dispersed in petroleum oil. Convicted emotions consist of five to ten percent petroleum oil dispersed and water. Problems associated with the use of improper lubricants are many and varied. Some common problems include loss of lubricant inventory, loss of lubricant, overheating, increased corrosion, and wear. Excessive wear and vibration. A bearing failures. Major cause Of lubrication 
related failures. Is the incorrect amount of lubrication being applied to components? Where is defined as the removal of material from one or more solid surfaces that are in contact. There are many types of wear that occur in lubrication systems. We have abrasive wear, adhesive wear, surface fatigue, fretting, Article and droplet erosion, spark erosion, thermal softening. Impact wear, corrosive wear. Abrasive wear occurs when two materials contact each other and the surface of one material is harder that the surface of the other. Adhesive wear results When burrs at the sliding interface between two mating parts melts and welds to the surfaces together.
adhesive wear. Initiate. On a microscopic level, it rapidly gets larger. Machines are subjected to stresses during operation. These repeated stresses and a rolling or sliding contact can cause fatigue failure. A fatigue crack requires some number of stress cycles to form <coughs> fretting is defined as accelerated surface damage occurring at the interface of contacting materials Subjected to small oscillatory displacements. Impact wear occurs during handling or mounting resulting in depressions The depressions that occur become the start of premature
fatigue. Corrosive wear is the unintended destructive chemical air electrochemical reaction of a material with its environment. Many forms of corrosion lead to failure of metal parts or render them susceptible to other forms mechanical failure. Proper oil <clears throat> and grease levels are important for proper operation components and equipment. If oil level is too low, then inadequate lubrication may allow the surfaces to come in contact with each other. If oil level is too high, then this overfilling can result in oil leaking and to other parts of the equipment Additionally, excessive oil can also generate heat because of the increased fluid resistance.
So there are four primary methods of supplying lubricating oil to gears and bearings and a gear unit. These are <clears throat> splash lubrication, force fed lubrication, oil mist, and intermittent lubrication. <clears throat> An oil circulation system is used to reduce the number of oil changes needed for a particular system. A positive displacement pump sends pressurized oil through the bearing housing and into the roller bearing after the oil's passage through the bearing Oil is filtered and possibly cooled before being returned to the bearing. Anti-friction bearings <coughs> can be lubricated with grease or oil. The choice of lubricant depends on conditions such as operating temperatures, rotating speeds, and environmental conditions. Under normal operating conditions, the bearings can be grease lubricated.
advantages are easy to add additional grease offers better adhesion capabilities provides protection against moisture and contaminants easily retained in the bearing housing. Flash point of oil. Is the temperature at which the oil produces sufficient flammable <coughs> vapor to ignite when the vapor is brought to momentary contact with a flame. Fire point is the higher temperature at which the oil vapors will continue to burn when ignited. Neutralization number is 
is a measure of acidic components and oils. And we'll stop here today. If there are any questions, uh, please send me an email. Uh, continue to work hard and study.